Hello and welcome to episode 4 of the Instrument Panel Apps series. This one we're going to look at how to edit or create your own instrument panels using the website. The website is, shall we say, in three columns. On the left here we have example panels, my panels and things to let us download and back up. In the centre we've got the active panel that we're working on and some of these come with extensive descriptions of how to operate them. Then if we scroll along to the right there is a column showing uh, an item for each bit that is in the current panel. If we press on edit it will open out the whole set of parameters for this one. Its label is BAT1V so it's this one over here and it tells us lots of things about that panel and all the things we can change and modify to suit what we want. If we press finish it simply closes that one down and allows us to move on to each of the others. Let's take a little look over here. So before you do anything, come down here, give it a name and save this panel as before you start any work on it. For example, if you want to create a new one, pick the empty panel, come down here, give it a name, save it as and it will now appear in, in your panels. Background image if you want. Uh, I prefer not to do it here. I prefer to choose an image on the transmitter itself in the app. You can download the JSON. That is basically the, the file for that instrument panel. You could send it to somebody else if you want. And you could import a panel that somebody else has sent you. Download the PNG is just a, uh, an image. Backup and restore. Uh, download the EDN backup. Basically this gives you a backup file of all the stuff that's in your uh, set of panels which is very useful to have just in case you know you're getting a new computer uh, all your IP addresses whatever have changed you could then restore it by choosing a file and bringing it all back. So I do this just from time to time just in case things get corrupted or lost or I have to change computer. Right, you choose, let's say, uh, CB Harry Dial. We'll pick on that to start with. You come across here and you can edit any of these items. If we have a look at uh, the BAT1V, edit. That's how we set it all up. You, you'll be able to see all the various things there. And in order to set up BAT2 volts, which is simply just the red needle over it, what I did was duplicate it and then go in and edit it and, and basically make it clear. Otherwise you'd have to set up all your radiuses and divisions and everything again. So if you look down through that, you'll see how things were done. Font label color were changed to red instead of the green light grey for the background boxes, face visibility was off and scale visibility was off and that's how we made it basically all disappear except for the red needle so that the face with all the numbers disappeared. We set the needle colour to red and we trimmed it, that is shortened it a little bit so that if the two needles are overlapping you can still see a bit of the green and the red. You don't wonder where it's disappeared to. And we did the same with the BAT1 amps. Panel name is there. Uh, you just can't see it because the font colour is black and there's no background here so black on black you can't see it. And then down here finally was the stacked text box. That's how we set that up. There we are. Not a lot to it. Okay. Now, if we come back here, and I'll choose empty. Just to show you what we're doing, I'll save this panel as empty. 
Two save it, there we are. Now empty 2 is the panel we're editing so it's not going to mess up the original empty panel. Come up here and choose what you want to insert. Sequence text box blah, 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 blah. let's choose a round needle gauge. New. We'll put it in. And now we can edit it. Let's put it in quite large. Uh, the X and Y uh, are its coordinates so X is how much left and right, Y is how much up and down, the radius is 80. Let's say we wanted another dial in here, we'll take it down to 70. Now we can use the mouse to slide things or you can use the left right arrows on the keyboard to change that. It gives you a finer level of control than trying to move it with the mouse. Let's duplicate it, finish now as you can see we have another one. If we give that a label, let's call that one volts. Let's call that one amps. And you're wondering where's volts gone? We, because we duplicated it, amps is just sitting on top of it. So now what we can do is move its X position along to the right. And there we are. Um, and then you can play about with the numbers, the divisions, the ticks, how many decimal places in the tick labels, the tick to number spacing. Just have a little play with these and you'll see what they do. You can see that it, you can move it further out, right outside, or keep it inside. Uh, font size for the readout, that's this number here. So you can change that. Uh, the font color labels, label positions, so where they are, and uh, the arc width of the radius is a percentage, so you can expand that, slim it down. And the uh, spectrum, which at the moment is uh, in manual, if you want, you can remove them all together. You can add arcs in, and you can literally just type in the color you want from a, a large uh, list of names. If I go gray, you can see that's changed to gray. I think there's light gray. Yep. And if you don't want the green sector or the yellow sector, let's remove the yellow sector. Let's remove the orange sector. So it just goes from gray to green. The face visibility is on, so it's all visible to you. Needle standards. There can be different ones. Trimmable needles is allow how you trim it, trim the needle. And so have yourself a play around with those sorts of things. Now, if you want to add something else, you could say we shall have a panel light. Add it in. Say new. There it is. It's a red light color is red. Suppose you don't want it to be red, you want it to be green. Simply type in the word green and it becomes a green panel light. What else could you choose? The sequence text boxes are those like you've seen on the turbine panel. Uh, a stacked text box is what we have on the central box panels. Where you can put in the various bits of text and I explained in the episode 2 about the central box how you put in the S number for the telemetry Lua variables followed by a decimal point and a number of uh, decimal points that you or decimal places that you actually want it to be. You can have a round art gauge so new to that pops it in so now instead of a needle it will move with the arc and you can move your uh, arcs, needles, whatever, by moving the value. So you'll see what it looks like as you change it. If we go back up to volts, um, you'll see as we move it, the needle moving. 
so you can see what things look like. And so that's the basis of getting it all done on the website. It, the best thing to do is just have a good play around with those. Put yourself an empty panel in and play with it. Uh, let's take that one out. Let's delete it. So you see, you can just play around to your heart's content as long as you did that bit down here of saving it as something else and not editing your original. Um, not too problematic if you edit the empty because you can just go in here and delete everything you've put in. But if you've tried editing one of the others and you want to get the original again then you might not remember what the original was like. So there you go, that will get you started on this. But with all the example panels, you can get a long way uh, without ever having to come in here and do any creation or editing. But, <clears throat> but if you create some lovely panels like uh, Rick did with his uh, beautiful four and five uh, cylinder head temperature RPM gauges, then and you want to share it, do let us know and we could see if we could uh, share it amongst the community or even add it to the example panels here. Okay folks, have lots of fun with that, creating beautiful instrument panels.